All right, time to open some Wilds of Eldrain. Let's start with draft boosters. Now, I'm not that familiar with Wilds of Eldrain. I did open the original product uh, from a play group back in the day. Um, it looked really nice. The, the uh, storybook aspect of it was kind of cool. Um, it wasn't my favorite set, but this new aspect with the, you know, edible creatures, because a lot of them are gingerbread and that they have abilities on them that aren't necessary, don't really, you know, aren't, you know, mechanically necessary for playing the game, like the, the creatures on their own without the mechanic are great, and with the mechanic it doesn't necessarily prove them, but it adds a lot of flavor, and I think that's actually really cool. So, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what some of those would look like, and then of course, obviously, the, the you know, more expensive cards, and you know, the, the reprints that are coming in the set. So, I look forward to that. Oh, I guess they said pull tap, so makes it a little bit easier. All right, so what order are these ones in? Because I know the the Commander Masters was kind of all over the place. Oh, well, so the rare is out there first, the uh, Mythic Omniscience. Don't know if that's uh, necessarily a hit, but it's a Mythic. Twinning, twining Twins, all right. I love this border treatment and I, I like that the, the card can do two things and, you know, cast a part of it from exile. So you play that and then you can cast the creature from exile. That's kind of cool. Um, but I haven't really encountered too many of those cards that I want to use. Cheeky House Mouse, huh? <laughs> uh, neat. Evolving Wilds. It's always nice to see. Beanstalk Worm. Now, the the naming themselves and the art are really great, and it's, you know, the whole Grimm's fairy tales, or, I mean, also non-Grimm's fairy tales. It's really neat, um, and also kind of draws you in. So if you were playing a draft of, uh, of Wilds of Eldrain, uh, I think that would be kind of cool. Um, and it would probably tell a nice little story. Now, I'm sure that's true most sets, but I think it's really accentuated in Wilds of Drain. Grasp of Fate. Now, the I do like the art on these, uh, and the extended art, and the, the, the treatment of the cards, whether they're worth anything or not, so... So there's, it's not surprising there's a lot of mice in these sets. And um, I don't know, was mice, mouse a tribal thing before? Or, excuse me, typal? Um, ah, gingerbread, there we go. Okay, so this is the first time I'm actually looking at these mechanics. So I, I know the general outline. So, so it comes in with haste. And one, gingerbread can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. And then two, tap, sacrifice gingerbread, you gain three life. So it's food. <laughs> so... You can eat your creatures if you want, or you can use them to attack. That's pretty great. Um, and, you know, I would include them as commons and uncommons, regardless of how they're costed. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at the costing of, of cards when I'm constructing a deck, but mostly it's just what they do. Um, and, you know, they're, if they're like hugely overcosted, I might avoid them. Oh, there you go. You can scan that in if you want. I don't think that's actually pointing because it's just going to send you to Arena to download it. So, don't bother. Uh, rat out. Uh, up to one target creature can think of one they one until the turn. You create a 1-1 one, one black rat. Okay. So there's some rat stuff going on, mouse stuff going on, gingerbread stuff going on. That's really blue. And I don't think that's an uh, anime style. It's, um... I don't know what it is. Cubist? I mean, I'm just going based on the sharp angles. Uh, Restless Fortress. Are these uh, lands any good? Restless Fortress. No, that answer's tap, so people won't consider them good. Um, 
but it becomes a creature, so I don't know. I guess I can quickly go through everything after we've gone through a few booster packs just to give you a flavor of what these Oh, what is this? This is an interesting token. Token enchantment or a roll. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has ward one. Um, someone in the comments tell me how these work, these uh, flipping them around. So you got a royal and a young hero and I guess you choose so the, I guess there's a card that says bring in a token enchantment and it's one of these two. I don't know. I didn't look up. So let me know in the comments and say, hey, maybe if you're doing these, you should look this shit up. I probably won't. Raid Bombardment. It's got cutesy art style, but the red really pops. So I like it. What in the pyromancer? <clears throat> spider food? What do spiders eat? Spiders eat anything. Strip to one target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. Create a food token. Eh, I don't think. Is that spider food? You destroy something and you create a food token. So you're going to eat it. You're going to eat the purported spider food? I don't know if that. That's Gans for me. I don't think that card will ever be in my deck. Grabby Giant. <laughs> that actually reminds me of uh, this Dungeons Dragons thing with uh, giants and halflings. Uh, was it Mike Merles, I think, was telling us? They had this idea. They added this into Volos, I think, um, about giants. There's one of those uh, both sided cards. Um, that they play this game called Stuff Stuff. Where they try and uh, they they basically compete to see how many halflings they can stuff in their mouth. I always thought that was funny. And a grabby giant looked like it was grabbing a halfling, probably to play some stuff stuff. And also, out of contact sounds really bad. Food token island waste on that. That's cool art. I like that. And it's still in that uh, that uh, that angular style, but it really works for this one. Um, you know, the witch thing going on. Virtue of presence. These virtues seem to be um, uh, at least I don't know, like five ten dollar cards. I don't know. There's some merfolk. Titanic growth. But yeah, I did see that, that the the virtues. Are holding a little tiny bit of value, or they're at least a little bit sought after in this pre release period. Will they go up? Will they go down? I don't know. What the hell? Oh, I'm pinching it on the other side, but this seems to be also a little sticky, or at least frictiony. Sticky is the wrong word. Griffins. Oh, Blossoming Taurus. That one's a hit. Real treatment. Collector's Vault. Beanstalk Worm, saw that already. Ice Out. Ah, that's cool art. It's common, but it's cool art, and I... It's probably Elsa. Because, you know, I'm guessing, you know, this is their Disney Flurry. I only just thought of that, that Wiles of Eldraine is out weeks after Lorcana is supposedly out but you know it's impossible to <laughs> goblins are always funny uh iron crag that's cool whenever the legendary creature enters battlefield under your control you may have the iron crag uh, become a legendary equipment artifact named legendary named everflame hero's legacy if you do it gains equip three equipped creatures interesting um yeah so lorcana's was, you know, out, but I mean, you, it's not like you could get any, but you can get Wilds of Eldraine, which is very Disneyfied, but on the darker side, because, I mean, magic is, has always been on the darker side, despite wizards trying to soften the tone, they haven't gone too far, at least, because uh, the tone isn't soft in any way. That is beautiful. The end. Should I stop here? No. But 
I will probably put that in a deck somewhere. I don't know what it does, Exile. Or... I'll look it up later, but uh, it'll probably go in the deck at some point in time, just because, you know, the end. So, with this pull tab stuff, I assume they're Japanese, right? Because that's the only printers that do that, is the Japanese printers. Polluted Bonds. I can't remember, was this a... Uh... Eh, it's just a rare, but it looks so nice. Okay, I'm starting to really warm up to this art style. It's not usually the art style that I prefer. Like, uh, was where did I first see that? I think it was uh, the Samurai Jack cartoon had, had art like that. I don't know. And then, oh, the, uh, the original, uh, because they, I think they used the same artist uh, to do the original Clone Wars TV show. Not the Clone Wars movie and not the Clone Wars, like, show that went on for several seasons, but that one, it was like one season of these little shorts that when everyone was trying to do, like, you know, the, the uh, web shorts, and they thought that's going to be the new way people are going to watch stuff. They're going to watch short things, and they're going to watch it on the internet, and everyone else go home. Shut down your networks and movie studios. We don't need it anymore. The internet is one. Restless Spire. And it's foil. That, I don't know if, uh, how old you are, but uh, you might remember the wonderful world of Disney and then you throw in some dragons there instead of Tinkerbell. <laughs> but it's just a tapped land, so I don't know if really anyone cares. Garrick's Uprising. I probably should have stack these better because this uh, stack is going to get out of hand really quick. But, you know, everyone has, you know, difficulty, you know, separating all these different treatments and stuff like that. Obviously this one has less different treatments than, um, than most of the other sets, or at least, uh, what was it, uh, the, not Phyrexia, but the March of the Machine, where it was all the different, you know, box toppers that have come in the past, and that must have been, I mean, on camera, while you're trying to talk, and while you're trying to enjoy the, the opening and entertain people while doing it, the idea of also trying to sort out that set is uh, pretty mind-numbing. I don't think, yeah, we really did do some of those, and I think you just put them all in one pile, um, but, I wonder if anyone else, you know, really sorted them well on camera. Force Fruition. That's a nice art, but I don't think, uh, I don't think it's worth anything. Cruel Stompage. Tangled Colony. King Rat, basically, right? A Rat King, whichever way you say it. Tango Colony can't block. Interesting. Great X, 1-1 one, one black creatures. X is the amount of damage dealt to it. That makes sense. Actually, that's a cool little concept for rat stuff. That's cool art, too. Oh. All right. All right. I like the art in this, even though it's different than what I prefer, the samurai jackness of it. Yeah. All right. Even with this pull tab, sometimes, yeah, there's a weird friction sometimes when you get that. And I'm, I'm, that's not a euphemism for anything, there's just weird friction, okay? Deal with it. This Vampiric Rites actually is cool. I don't know if I'm going to do this for every card, like, maybe you're sick of me saying, hey, this is cool art, hey, this is cool art. Yeah, we know, we saw the art, we looked at it, we saw the spoilers. Well, I don't look up the spoilers. Sometimes the spoilers come to me because I watch the Magic Historian or MTG Mox Man. Rudy doesn't really talk about spoilers because he also actively avoids them. Uh, I'm not actively avoiding them, I just don't actually care all that much about spoilers. I enjoy much more Decadent Dragon. Yeah. Um, I just more enjoy seeing the cards in hand for the first time than seeing them on the screen for the first time. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not actively avoiding Spoilers, but I'm not going out of my way to check it out either. Uh, Karmic Justice. I think that's a 
card people like, but I don't think it's worth anything. Or I could be thinking of some other Justice card from Revised, because those are the cat cards that I'm more, I guess, you know, familiar with after all these years. Hatching Plans. Oh, I think we already saw that one. Gruff Triplets. Huh. Is that a... No, because they're cat people. So I, I thought it was that um, three halflings in the trench coat joke. Now, I hope there's a card like that in here. That's... Uh, be a nice little reference. Or one trench coat pretending to be three halflings. That is more storybook set. <laughs> Horned lock whale. Probably shouldn't put the, uh, the big pile front and center. Put it off the side of the camera. That's what everyone does. That's what the cool people do. The people who know what they're doing do. The Griffin Airy, and you can tell I'm not one of the people. Regal Bunnycorn. Regal Bunnycorn's power and toughness is. Bunnycorn's power and toughness are each. Oh, are each equal to the number of non land permanents you control. Ha! Huh. Alright. Uh, yeah. As you can tell, I'm not a person who knows what they're doing, and you can let me know in the comments. You don't know what you're doing. How dare you have box openings! without being an expert on all this. I'm the expert, so you need to repeat everything I already know. Sanguine Bond. That's another Sanguine card coming out of two different sets. But, uh... Huh. Interesting. I'll probably throw that in the deck. Also, it looks nice. Spiteful Hex Mage. Yeah. You don't want to cross his path. I'm gonna move this stack off to the side. You can still kind of see it. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, someone definitely tell me what's with those uh, double, uh, or not double sided, but two edge tokens. Restless Fortress. I think we already looked at that. Yeah, that's one of the lands, but the full art version is very nice. Uh, Also, the pack card is kind of cool. I mean, it basically tells you what you're getting into, and someone with armor casting spells. You know, I'm an old D and D player, and that's not a thing. But uh, that could just be cloth armor. But also, I hate cloth armor. <laughs> Specifically, what was it? Uh, oh, virtue of courage. The virtue cards are worth something. I know that. Um, yeah, what was it? Um, Whatever that that fantasy show based on the Wheel of Time. That's it, the Wheel of Time. The warrior in that is wearing goddamn cloth armor, and the cloth is shaped as if it's, you know, actual armor, but it's not. And, you know, it's not like he's apparently a dexterity based character. I just don't understand why there's no metal, like, I don't know, bronze or, like, some plate mail, some splint mail, some chain mail, whatever. Just not goddamn cloth on a guy with a sword. Like, that's shortest sword fights ever, man. I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it that a warrior in a place that clearly is at the technological level to be ironsmithing isn't wearing some kind of iron or steel armor. You know? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, I don't know. You can let me know too, but I probably will scoff. Actually, that's uh, the, 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 the the sword people on, uh, and the sword and armor people on YouTube. I don't think anyone ever talked about that, but that's probably because no one really watched the show. Right? <clears throat> the books were never that good either. Keep going on Wheel of Time. I don't know why people like it. Ooh, that's nice. I like the little, what is it? Oh, the guy's sword has some sort of flamish electrical charge. I don't know. 
Vessel Spire. What's this? Oh, I like this. Candy Trail. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah, I really do enjoy the Hansel and Gretel of it all. Rotisserie Elemental. All right, that's funny. Does that one have... Uh, it doesn't have any food uh, token ability, but it does seem to create some sort of food-like thing, so... <laughs> it's funny. I like it. Now, I don't know. Maybe you didn't find it as funny as I did. And obviously I didn't laugh. I just said it was funny. And some people say, when you say something's funny, but you don't actually laugh, then... You know, it's not funny, but I don't know if that's true. Also, that is not something that needs to be discussed on this particular video, but uh, just something that came to mind. I like the rotisserie elemental. Prismic Omen. Interesting. I didn't see that in the, uh, in the most expensive cards. I mean, it's only a rare. Yeah. But I like it. It's got nice art and it has a cool ability. And repercussion. That's a mythic that I don't think it has much value. Oh, but I think this one does. The named people, you know, the so and so, the blah blah blah. They tend to have some value. That was a good that was a good pack. That was three mythics? Yeah. Huh. So I don't know. Congratulate me on the three mythic pack in the comments. I need the comments. I keep saying comments. You know why? Because if you comment, then you get engagement. And then, then the algorithm's like, oh, oh, people like this guy. And you probably don't like me. That's fine. But maybe someone else will, and you can help them find me through the algorithm. So just do it. Just, just comment. All right, we're down two packs here. I don't like to pull tabs because they do tend to, uh, you know, have that small chance of hurting the corner of the cards as you pull it out. I mean, I could be more careful, but also they could just not do that. Oversold, Oversold Cemetery. Interesting. Uh, Moonshaker Cavalry. Yeah, I think that's one. That's a hit. Alright, that's the last pack. So, I don't know, what was your favorite card in there? And uh, what did you think of the Mythics? Which one is the one that you are looking for the most? Um, someone in my store uh, said they wanted a specific card from Wilds of Eldraine, and I said to them, okay, if I see it, I will put it aside and not sell it online. Like the last time when I got the Jeweled Lotus, and unfortunately uh, this great fellow that comes in, was looking for a Jeweled Lotus basically a day after, a day or two after we sold it. I really would have rather sold it to him, but uh, you know, what can you do? Anyway, leave a comment, help me with the algorithm, and uh, I'll move into the set boosters, and that'll be out in a couple days.